Hello, hello, hello. I'm Wally. And I'm Rudy. And welcome to this episode of IoT All The Things, where we do our AMA Ask Me Anything session. We're going to be diving into best practices, operations, device management, mobile development, Amplify. It's a jam packed with IoT content. Can't wait for everyone's submission. So, Rudy, let's uh, let's kick this bad boy off. I'll say, yeah, man. We're going to say, welcome, everyone, and uh, you're joining us for IoT All The Things. I'm the essay leader for IoT. And I am Rudy Chetty. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS. So Rudy, I know this is, uh, again, we're doing coast to coast. We're covering all time zones. How, how's Seattle treating you? Man, you know what? It's more of a Seattle day today. It's kind of overcast. Maybe it'll, it'll rain a bit. So I'm just like, wait, this is the normal Seattle. So I don't know if I missed the sun. But I do miss the sun. You know why? <laughs> Last time, allergies. Today, allergies. <laughs> yes. It's well, like, it's funny because you can't I think, win. I think yeah. yeah, I think your Seattle weather has uh, come over to the East Coast because in Massachusetts, it's just like rainy and overcast. So I'm like, yeah, this this does. It, I feel like we're closer together, Rudy. That's that's what I feel like. Yeah, there you go. It's it's IoT all the pollen. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we kind of gave a little bit of prelude to all the stuff we'll cover, but you know, there's a lot of great use cases based on the Ask Me Anything submissions, and we hope people will continue to put them in, but you know, definitely we'll dive into some mobile and IoT. That came up a couple times from our last session, like how do you do mobile best practices, IoT best practices, how do you pin them together? And like Rudy, as you know, like there's so many use cases that cover like mobile and tablets and things like that. Oh, there's just, it's just, it's always jam packed in the sense that we have a lot to talk about and whether we can fit that into an hour is another story. But like you said, mobile, tablet, I mean, the devices that we're going to talk about with limited CPU memory, it's just too much, too much, which is why it's a good thing. <laughs> That's why we'll be back again on another episode because we'll just keep, <laughs> keep adding on. We'll just, more and more content we'll just keep going. We'll kick the next person who's coming on stream off and we'll be like, sorry, we are IoT all the thing and then IoT all the things and then we just keep going. Yes. Cool. So hopping into my console in terms of all the tricks, we get this question often in terms of how do I make sure my system's kind of well architected, that my system's working correctly. Uh, so I'm in the console, and if you actually go to the well-architected tool in the console, this is something we released. It used to be just a white paper, but in the well-architected, we actually focus on all these pillars. It's you know operational best practices, uh, security, uh, reliability. And what's really interesting is if you use this tool, you can actually get prescriptive guidance on all the best practices. So. We also kind of link you to a lot of collateral, so you can say, I want to look at reports, um, I want to look at, you know, my dashboard to see how I'm doing, but it's a great resource that you can use to just check your application and if you're doing the right things. So I can go in, I can actually define a workload, and then in that workload, I can basically like see how I'm doing, you know, I can see if I have high risk, if something's low risk. Uh, and then I can create as many workloads as I want. So, you know, I'll go in here and maybe start one for, for IoT Twitch. Uh, so knowing that's the segment we're on and just give a kind of quick description, you know, well-architected. Hopefully this show is well-architected. We hit all the pillars <laughs> in quick succession. <laughs> uh, and then you fill out a bunch of other information. You know, is it production? Is it pre-production? This gives you an idea of like what kind of application you're working with even what region you're running in. So is this US East, US West, is it Europe? Uh, and then you can put a bunch of other information and uh, don't forget the owner, uh, which is something I just did here, but the owner lets you know like who is running this review for you. And so the nice thing, once you have it, you can select using the well-architected framework or you can do serverless. We have an IoT white paper as well. We would love to get it into this tool, but this just gives you a bunch of really cool best practices. 
Um, so if you see, I hop back in and I can look at, you know, all my questions, they're all in the same pillars. And I can actually go in and select one of these pillars. So I'll do Operation of Excellence. And then it's going to give me all the questions. So it'll say, here's a question one, you know, are you doing it or not? Uh, I can click into the individual question. And then from here, you notice on the right, there's like a whole bunch of helpful information, like short videos on why this is important, best practices and links to find more and implement how you do it. And then for each question, you can figure out, is this actually something I'm doing in my workload? Maybe it's not applicable. And if it is applicable, you can actually just check the options you want. You can say, hey, I care about these things. I'm doing them well. I'm not doing them at all. Uh, and then that allows you just to like continue to build in your application. So it's really cool. It's a great tool to use. Uh, I mentioned we don't have it in the tool today, but IoT actually has a well-architected lens. Same format, like the same five pillars that we have today. And then within those pillars, what's really cool is that we follow all the same standards as the well-architected tool. So I'll actually go in and select the pillar section here. Now let me pick one I'm in a mood for. Uh, maybe we'll just, we'll go with the operational one again. And then kind of similarly, the same kind of layout, you know, what are our best practices? What should you, shouldn't you be doing? And then if I kind of scroll quickly towards the end, you see the exact same questions. So we try to phrase the questions so you can, you know, build an application that follows all our best practices. And these, this is just all available for you, for you to use without actually having to know a ton about, about AWS. So, um, cool. That is our first, uh, tip. So if you haven't had a chance to use the well-architected tool, definitely check it out. I think it's a great way for everyone to, to get started. So Rudy, not sure if you've, uh, yeah. you've dove, dove into the tool as much and work with customers. <laughs> you know, with customers, you, uh, go into the tool, you show them how to use it. And then from there they can go, but you usually run them through the first review, you know, hand in hand so that you can actually get them used to the way of the console uh, looks or the way the console looks and how to answer questions. And you can also show them the videos. So in each pillar on the far right, there's usually a video that tells you, how do I answer this question in case your essay is not available at that particular time. And I will say another tip or trick is to check out the performance efficiency pillar specifically. <laughs> uh, you might, you might recognize the guy in the videos there. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Oh, oh, look at that nice plug. I like that. I like that. We have a couple of use cases that came up often in the AMA submissions from last week. So I love to dive into the first use case where we dive into kind of the best practices getting started in AWS IoT and configuring correctly. So I'll hop back into my console and actually walk you through how to really get started in AWS IoT and all the settings you, you have available. So. And uh, what you'll see is if you've, uh, if you've experienced the AWS console, it's, it's made some great revolutionary strides these days. Uh, but if you click into the services, what's really interesting is that, you know, there's several IoT services that you can use. IoT Analytics does all the pipeline ingestion, kind of sending of data upstream and then to visualize it. Defender is all about security. So like all our security best practices, and we've done some Twitch sessions on Defender in the past. And then device management, which we'll cover in a little bit more detail as I kind of hop around in a console. But this is for things like fleet operations, OTAs, all of the best practices. So if I, if I go into any of these device management, it's going to take me into the AWS IoT console. And as you can see, I can see all of my devices, things that are running. Um, and then I can kind of go into a bit more depth in terms of how I configure these for best practices. So if you scroll to the very, very bottom of the console, there's a settings section. And this is actually a place customers don't get to as much. I actually say, first things you do is go into the settings page. Because yep. what you'll find is that like your IoT endpoint where you configure it is actually in your settings page. So we recommend not using a generic endpoint. You actually use your console endpoint. Rudy, you've seen this as well too. It's like, this allows you to make sure you go to the right place and then customers just don't know, don't know where that is. Oh yeah, I mean, usually I'd go to, or customers when we're talking about it, you'd go to the, uh, the device itself and then click on interact to see what the URL is. But this is a much better way of looking at it because like you said, it's generic. 
Yeah, and if you see, I, I'm actually log going into our like logging page, and this is actually another place where customers don't configure. So AWS IoT generates a lot of different logs for you, and we give different log levels. So I recommend like when you get to production, you should always put in an error mode. Error mode means you're going to catch things like um, the rules engine is throwing an error because I don't have the right permissions. Uh, warning is a little bit more like your system is still functioning, but warning could be things like, um, you know, we're hitting uh, capacity on your upstream instances, but it's just lower latency. And then when you get into like development phase, just put it on debug. Debug is going to give you everything to get started. And when you are kicking the tires on debug, just makes it super easy for you to like troubleshoot. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of hop in a little bit later, but this is a great way in terms of best practices of just like getting yourself configured in AWS. In the very bottom, we have this thing that's just called like, you can think of it as just AWS IoT event um, uh, notifications and messages. So they're kind of these predefined event-based messages you can subscribe to and they run the gamut. You know, they do everything from over the air updates to updating of individual devices. So uh, if I scroll a little bit over to the right, you'll see that we've got something called a job. This is the over the air update that I talked about earlier. So this is like a job successful, completed, you know, a job is errored or failured. And then we have a whole bunch of other things towards the bottom, which is about like your registry. Like I create a device, I delete device. Uh, Rudy, you can already tell there's like a ton of different notifications that fly around this system. <laughs> I know. I'm, it's just like it's always uh, interesting to remind yourself how many are going in and out because normally you just sit there and everything's configured. <laughs> it's it's always yeah. like I said. It's, it's humbling to be reminded how many go through. Yeah, and I think if you're getting started, you notice I just clicked the first two. So like, if you're just trying to figure out how to get started in AWS IoT, the first two are just related to OTAs. So like, definitely start there. It'll make your life easier because that's just going to be all your update notifications. And then as you get really complex, like if you want to do things like uh, be notified whenever someone creates a thing or updates it, then you'll do all the stuff at the bottom. But getting started first time, just like the first two, it'll make your life so much easier. So we talked about the endpoints, the logging, the events. The cool thing that I want to dive into next is actually device management fleet indexing. And so you can think about this thing worth noting is that fleet indexing in device management allows you to do really rich search in AWS IoT. So if you haven't really used fleet indexing before, we have a bunch of different settings. Uh, one is just the ability to search an individual thing. You can search the device shadow. You can even search if a device is on or offline based on if it's connected to AWS IoT core. So these are just like indexes that get spun up they're managed on your behalf then you don't actually have to do anything to actually manage you know the scaling of the index we do that on your behalf and then to get these working i just select a couple options I, i'm not going to change mine here then i just hit update settings and now it's already up and running for me so my index is complete it's up and running now i can actually do just basic searches in the console so this is like just a basic search experience search for a name so I can search for sensors, uh, SF East. But if I click on that indexing option, it's actually gonna let me do more advanced searching. So this is actually a leucine based, like Elasticsearch Solar on top of AWS IoT. All managed for me. I can do things like, is this device online or not? So I have a couple of devices that are not online because they're all demos. I can do online to true. So I've got a couple of things online right now. So these are just all sensors that are related to uh, another use case in the second half. So already online, ready to go. And then, you know, you can do all kinds of crazy searches here. You can do things like wildcard names, right? Like you can say anything that starts with sensor. Um, and this gets, when you get to scale, like standards are so important. Like when you create a standard, like a naming standard and say this version always starts with X, it's really easy to then go find it later. You know, if you kind of create a, you, you know, a, a snowflake for each thing, like everything has a unique name, it's super hard to manage, right? Like you just, you just don't know what it's called anymore. You have to keep a, you have to keep a Rolodex of, of your things, which is, uh, 
not exciting. <laughs> a Rolodex, man. I haven't I haven't seen one of those in a while. Maybe we should do an IoT Rolodex. You know, where we just each card is IoT enabled, so you can just touch it to your phone, use NFC, and it'll sync the contact. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think that's that. That I could be another channel. I think it's a 2.0 for our our our, our trick. <laughs> So if you see here, I, I didn't configure it, but you can do things like aggregates as well. So like you can aggregate data across your things. You can say, you know, I want to do a percentile search or I want to do a statistical roll up of, you know, battery health. So all of that's available. If you notice I didn't spin up any servers. All of that's just managed by AWS IoT device management. I love it. Nice. And I'll do a blast from the past from people who are AWS vets, but uh, you saw me configure logs earlier in AWS IoT. Ignore the alarms. Um, I should go fix those later. But <laughs> if, you, if you hop into log groups, <laughs> no alarms were hurt in the making of this. Uh, if, you, if you hop into CloudWatch logs, you'll see I can actually break down all the logs in AWS IoT based on a log level. So Again, like debugging, this is so helpful. Like you'll hop into a log and you'll say, oh, this rule triggered, you know, what rule was it? Uh, was it related to a device or not? You know, like all the metadata, and let me see if I can open a, another one to kind of break down some of the metadata. Uh, here we go. So like you can see, we do things like timestamp, the log level that's available. Uh, we'll also do things like the status, was it successful or not? And even what triggered it? So this is like super, super helpful um, when, when you get started. So, uh, you know, that's a great way to get started in uh, AWS IoT and one of, one of the really cool use cases. I think I've got the, the console open here as well. And uh, if we, we go back to IoT core, I mean, you can see, you know, Wally, you've got so many devices there and mm -hmm. let's see how many I have. Oh, see, not as many. I clearly, <laughs> I clearly need to catch up. Rudy, you're, just, you're just cleanlier than I am. You know, you're like you like tidy up your space when you're done, and you know, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'll just put that there for later. And I'm thinking, oh wait, no, look at my certificates. That does not map <laughs> one to one. That definitely oh. does not map one. You've been a bad, you've been a bad guy, Rudy. That, uh... <laughs> now, folks, that is not a best practice. Remember, we want certificates that are one to one with device to certificate. And if you're not using that certificate anymore, decommission it. Why? It's just you want to minimize the, the surface area there. You know, make sure that there are no hidden parts that can gain access to your, your devices. But again, uh, you know, better said than done. In this case, uh, I should be following my own advice. Hey, Wale, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Is that is that what you're not saying? Not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so I, I'm curious. We'll, we'll just check in. Rudy's got the chat open. Any any oh, interesting yeah. uh, use case AMA questions? Uh, let's see. Looks like people are still throwing in some questions there. Someone asked about fog computing. I directed them to Green Ross, uh, but I don't mm. know if you have any tips there with regards to container orchestration. I mean, Green Ross supports Docker uh, nowadays, so you can use it in that capacity. Yeah, I think what's what's really cool about um, like the edge is, I think kind of twofold, like the stance that we're thinking about in the edge is that like, if you look at green grass, it's how can we run stuff that ran in AWS IoT at the edge? So you mentioned it, it's like you can do containers, the MQTT topics are there, Lambda functions are there. Uh, TPM, like security support and secrets manager is there. When, I, when customers start to think about how to use Greengrass, like a couple of things I recommend is like pick a couple of the connectors that align really well to your use case. Like most people want to start out with like machine learning or a stream manager. I want to do batch analytics and batch processing at the edge. So start with like a handful that make a lot of sense. And just get that running first off with Greengrass, right? So it, it just makes it like really easy to get started. And then as you start to dive in, then start thinking about how you do lambdas and routing and 
um, you know, all of the kind of uh, other capabilities in green, in green grass. So there's a ton of options. The nice thing is you don't have to use them all at once. Like pick a couple of like anchor use cases, have that run in green grass first, and then you can just start iterating from there. You can start adding on more and more of the capabilities as you get used to combining this cloud to edge paradigm. I, I like it. It <clears throat> seems like we also have some folks asking about industrial IoT, and I know we like that, industrial IoT. Yes. Having, and, and Greengrass is also a fantastic way of getting into uh, the industrial IoT space, but you can use the straight AWS IoT core. So do you have any tips or tricks there, Wale? So I think the, the cool things in industrial I recommend customers look at is um, – you can definitely do it with IoT Core, but also um, IoT Analytics supports the ability to do directly to IoT Analytics over HTTPS. And then um, we launched at reInvent a service called SiteWise. Um, so that's something that's uh, uh, available now. It's a public preview. You can test it out. The nice thing with SiteWise is it combines the green grass components that I talked about, like running stuff at the edge with the industrial components, which is mostly like, how do I calculate efficient efficiency? How do I calculate uptime? Um, so looking at site-wise, IoT events, and then Greengrass, those are like the three services I see most commonly used. And the cool thing with site-wise, uh, if you're like looking to get started, is if you go into the console, and we'll post the link here for Twitch. If you go into the console, there's like a, like a quick start demo you can get started with. So you can actually like hop in, deploy a whole bunch of stuff with CloudFormation. Um, and we also have, we'll post this as well, like a three-part blog, which actually walks you through all the components of SiteWise and builds a edge to cloud implementation. I'm actually gonna hop into one of our second use cases that was submitted over uh, LinkedIn. Um, so this use case is about how you actually start building applications with AWS IoT yeah. and mobile. So I'm gonna switch screens again. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, we'll get this posted, but there is a sample application that uses IoT Core and AppSync. Um, if you haven't used AppSync, what's really cool with AWS AppSync and AWS IoT is it allows you to start plumbing together all of the real-time logic that exists. So definitely an awesome thing to note as we dive into this example. You know, Start looking at how to use IoT Core, IoT Events with other services like AppSync. And if you follow along in this demo, what we're going to do and I have running is it's basically the solution that combines AppSync, React Native, IoT Core, Lambda, a whole bunch of stuff just to route data and then create a dashboard and visualization. So uh, bringing, bringing IoT to life, you know, it's alive, it's alive. Like that's, that's what <laughs> I think about. <laughs> uh, I'll scroll down a little bit. Um, so if you were to run this example, you'll get the same kind of screenshot. Again, this is a way to get started really quickly. So AppSync is going to do the visualization, you know, the subscriptions to real time kind of input, and then a way to decouple from the actual visualization. So we're separating out like what IoT sends versus what you visualize. And again, we'll post that link in, but if you actually run this example, you'll get the same kind of dashboard when you're finished. You'll get like a way to dig into a sensor, see some values, uh, see a graph update. Mm. And what's interesting, there's not a lot of moving parts in this architecture. We'll talk about some of the best practices as you iterate on an architecture like this, but it's super simple to at least get started. We have an IoT core, which is what we talked about earlier. We use Lambda functions to basically route this to AppSync. And then AppSync does a lot of the visualization, resolving of additional data, and then all the visualization as well. So it's actually gonna tie all of this together for us. So Rudy, you're well aware, it's like when you start getting into IoT applications, you're using multiple services, not just IoT core, but databases, Lambda, all that other good stuff. Oh, no, exactly. And I was just looking at your architecture being like, man, if this existed a few years ago, I wouldn't have to have put up an, a static S3 website for one of the IoT <laughs> projects I had. I could have just said, oh, just use AppSync because with that, you still have to go in and actually code a website. And I can tell you this now, my site was, was working, but it wasn't Web 2.0. 
So if I mm-hmm. resized it, some of the elements shifted, and you're using table tags instead of divs. And man, you know, HTML to a lesson in itself of how to program and uh, or code a code a website. But AppSync makes it a lot simpler. You just plug in, as Wale said, and does some of the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, so like if you if you actually have this running, you know, we kind of talked through the architecture, but you have a few things on your your screen. So you'll end up getting your own local host running. So this is like where AppSync actually does the visualization where the dashboard is. And then uh, you saw my online devices from earlier, but it's because I was running this this demo. So you'll see that like these are all simulators publishing data um, into AWS IoT. So it's publishing all this telemetry data. And then this data is just going to allow me to like hop into the console, show a little bit more of all the moving parts, and then give people an idea of like how you get it running. Um, at scale, some things I'd recommend in, in the architecture, we kind of went directly from IoT Core to Rules Engine. But as you get more and more data, you just want to decouple that. So like you would end up doing something where it's IoT Core to Kinesis, to Lambda or IoT Core to Elasticsearch to, to Graph uh, AppSync, doing that decoupling. So my dashboard is, is up and running. Um, if I click on any of these sensors, again, this is all driven by AppSync and GraphQL, but it's all being fed by IoT Core. IoT Core just sends the data points in in real time. And then these are just gonna update every three seconds. So data is getting sent directly to IoT Core, IoT Core fires Lambda, Lambda, AppSync, and then visualize. Um, if I could pull a rabbit out of the hat, I, I would, but that's, uh, that's how all of this comes together. <laughs> I'm just imagining you pulling out a rabbit, but because we're, we're doing IoT all the things, anything we talk about, I just visualize as an IoT device. So I'm like, how is this <laughs> rabbit IoT-fied? <laughs> it's, just, it's got sensors on the back of its ears to know, you know, when the trick's going to happen or, or stuff like that. But again, like you said, you, you start small and you build on top of that. So you start yeah. with one device, yeah. keep going from there. And before you know it, you have pages and pages like us on our uh, consoles. <laughs> yeah. And if you, if you even look at this rule, just to show you how easy it is to come together, like all this rule is doing is taking my sensor data, grabbing the thing, and then just routing it. Um, what's really cool too is we haven't talked about this service as much either, but I can do that same routing to AWS IoT Analytics. So we have like that real time dashboard for let's say our consumer facing users. We can also create the dashboard specifically for kind of analytical queries. So um, in addition, along with IoT analytics, when I think about best practices, you can combine those same kind of rules for just long term archival data. So like, let's say you just wanted to route everything to just land in S3. You can take that same kind of pattern, taking the rules mm-hmm. engine, using some wildcard topics. And then in this case, I'll route it to Kinesis Firehose because again, we kind of think at scale, how do you buffer your data? So, you know, Kinesis Streams, Kinesis Firehose is the way for you to buffer data. IoT Analytics is another way for you to buffer data. And then it allows you to do some of the visualization, analytics, et cetera, at scale without having to run a whole bunch of individual compute. It's, it's that whole notion of, you know, again, how AWS IoT started with one service and then we started building it out such that if you need to do analytics, you don't have to leave that infrastructure. You can actually pipe it exactly. to IoT analytics and do it right there. And if you want, visualize it in QuickSight, another AWS service. Exactly. So, like, I, I've hopped into IoT analytics and what's really interesting is this is a way for me to process my data again so i've created a data set which is basically like a view on top of the data and then what's really interesting i can just run this data set so again like i'm not i'm basically decoupling like what we think is the fast path of data with the querying of the data and it's kind of like everyone says you do schema on write or schema on read what i'm really doing is doing that like schema on read of my data and then using IoT analytics, using app sync, using Kinesis Firehose, so then be able to query that data how I want to, you know, do some kind of cleaning of it, land it and then query it. Then if I need to do something really like compute intensive, 
Rudy, you mentioned it. You go to other services. You might do it in QuickSight. You might do it in EMR. Yeah. You might do it, you know, in other in other services. I mean, you could go through uh, so many that we have integrations with, but the ones that you mentioned, they even even something as simple as uh, I know with sending, say, an SMS message or push push notification, like you could go directly to SNS. Or better yet, you could go through Lambda to do a transformation and then from there go to actually uh, where you want to send the message through. So it's, again, appreciating all the integrations that we have between the different services. Yeah, and it, as I just go through, if you, if you want to get started, I brought this up again. But all you need to do is there's some prereqs that are listed. You know, you need Node.js. Uh, Mapbox, and then also I'll give a quick shout out to AWS Amplify, which is another thing that you just want to keep uh, keep a note of. Uh, the really nice thing with AWS Amplify is that it allows you to automate a lot of these uh, controls that I have listed. So what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to download the Amplify CLL, the CLI. You'll be able to build things with AWS um, Amplify, and then deploy it. You know, so all of that stuff that I showed in a terminal window that's running. That was all bundled together with Amplify. So rules engine, um, the GraphQL syntax, all of that is packaged up for me, and it just becomes super easy to get started. So I, I'm actually curious, really, as we wait for questions to come in, um, yeah. what kind of online resources do you use for like ramping up on IoT? Is there anything you like go to, anything you kind of pull to kind of help you get the lay of the land? For me, it, you know what, I, I do start with training and certification. So AWS training and certification, that's where I go to. And look, again, not to plug myself, but the introduction to AWS IoT, it, it might be a familiar face again. It, it just, it might, you know. And I just sometimes like watching that guy because he's just so eloquent. And he really yeah. explains AWS IoT. So if you're looking for the the five ten minute intro, check out AWS training and certification, and you know check out the the videos that we have there on introduction to AWS IoT. But that's where I start. Is there a particular place that you start? Uh, well, I'm not on any of those videos, so I don't know if I'm biased or not. But no, I think those videos are <laughs> those videos are fantastic. Um, training and, and curriculum definitely that's an area that I I use pretty heavily. Um, I also just like this will sound really nerdy, but I actually like reading the specs on the protocols. So like when the MQTT 500 specs came out, like I read the draft yeah. of that. Um, Reading it for bedtime is kind of a weird bedtime read, but when you get into the specs, you kind of understand why a protocol is important and like why people are thinking about it. So you like, I think you just get a better understanding of like how it fits your use case. So um, I do that often for like MQTT, um, lightweight M2M, uh, co-app UDP, obviously UDP isn't a protocol, but co-app on top of it. So like, it seems really mundane but it's like, once you know the details, you can start understanding why the details are important. Um, so all of that kind of stuff, consortiums as well, is always like a good resource for where the industry is headed. Again, it's it's trying to incorporate AWS I, or IoT in general into everyday processes. And you know, you have everyday objects, like we mentioned the mug or uh, you know, uh, any other uh, sensors that are in there. And I know we had a, a question from the AMA about agriculture. And one mm -hmm. sensor that just comes to mind for me is the water level sensor. We have customers who are using sensors like that, if not temperature and humidity, to monitor crops. And they'll actually go in and trigger sprinklers to activate if the, the humidity is too low or if they know that crops are, uh, need to be watered at a particular time. So there are use cases and uh, people are using AWS IoT for any number of industries. And I just want to make sure that I mentioned that because we had a question. And I've, I might have shown this before, but if you're trying to get started, just buy one of these sensor kits. Uh, you can see here where it's got 32 sensors. It lists out what sensors are in the kit. And one of them uh, is a water level sensor. So you can actually get started nice. and put that into your cup of water and check which water's in there in the sense that it's measuring the level. Keep going and 
use the temperature and humidity sensor. I mean, there's a few other ones that you can kind of go with. There's the, the switch sensor here as well, where you can change it to uh, change any number of settings when you push the button. But it's a way of getting getting started. And we always tell people, you gotta you got to think big, but start small. You know where you're yeah. just doing that, and I think oh, <laughs> see, see, yeah. even even AM's asking uh, any advice how to stay motivated and keep those senses for just living on a shelf in in his closet. Well, <laughs> I'll I'll say uh, you gotta <laughs> yeah you you, you, you gotta... have to, you have to keep getting more of them because <clears throat> eventually eventually they'll stack up on your desk and you're like I gotta I gotta face this challenge head on. Um, I I think to your point, what's interesting is um. I think the start small is a is a key kind of best practice. And as you mentioned, agriculture, maybe yeah. like a, a plug. Um, we see a lot of like machine learning use cases. So if you're kind of like maybe your interest isn't soldering boards, right? You're like, oh, you know, I, I, I just I'm using IoT, but I'm interested in machine learning. I'm interested in analytics. I'm interested in other parts. IoT makes up such a broad portfolio where like, you know, in agriculture, I see people looking at weather data sets and combining that with crop yield, right? So like then you're starting to get into some other things that maybe you're interested in. Like Rudy mentioned it too, maybe you're really interested in Lambda. So saying, how can I run Lambda at the edge and use that with green grass? So just finding ways where if you're really interested in one topic, seeing how you can I IOTify it. Is that, is that yeah, <laughs> can I, I coin that? Can I, can I trademark that? <laughs> but uh, IOT, uh, IOTifying, you know the rest of what you're interested in, and just and just testing it out. I and I know we, we're you know bringing up random things here, but I did get this uh, little toy here. It makes a little noise, so it quacks when you when you push it. I actually want to. I want to. I want to. You know, deconstruct this and make it IoT fied. I just somehow <laughs> do it where I can change whatever noise it makes, or yeah. You know, Whatever episode we have, maybe I'll I'll change it to do something fun where uh, people say, "Well, that 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 makes sense. That's why your senses won't sit on the shelf." And I think we've yeah. got a, another question think, here, uh, actually. Rudy, uh, I think what would be really funny. Yeah. Uh, before before we go to that question, what would be very funny is um, if you made that noise, that that thing you had up, if you had it say yeah. in Werner's voice, "Everything fails all the time," like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would be awesome. So the reality is that everything fails all the time. So the, the, to go to the, the question we have there from C the Guilt is, do you think the piezoelectric film sensor could detect a rice weevil for rice weevil detection? I'm like, well, um, it, it could. I mean, I would probably just use a motion sensor as well if it's going to detect that you have rice weevils. But you know what? If you have weevils, I think you've got a bigger problem there. Like, what? are you just not eating your rice? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, maybe that was to the guy. There was someone earlier point on the neural networks. I don't know if they're related, but um, I'm seeing a lot more use cases where cameras are the new sensors. So like people are looking at like Kinesis video streams yeah. in conjunction with IoT and then also with like the machine learning at the edge or in the cloud where you might not just say, oh, is it motion? You want to say, well, what, you know, motion triggers a camera action that lets you know whether you do further analysis. So just a thought there. We've got a couple like um, hardware kits with KVS on it, Kinesis video streams, but Maybe that's how you find your you find your culprit within a uh, a rice field of uh, uh, actions. Okay, well, you know what, it, it, it makes sense in the agriculture. I think uh, the the uh, our funder of Earth, uh, clarified there uh, rice in a silo. So yes, I think you guys are on the right track, and that's what oh. we're also saying is with regards to these sensors is you you kind of start backwards from a use case you know, don't look at the sensors in the sense that hey how do i use this how do i use that look at it work backwards from the customer and say how do we actually solve a business use case for you then you can start plugging in sensors to actually uh, do it but if you're just trying to play around and get sensors working which i happen to do every now and then <laughs> is, is just plug in one get it working plug in another one oh cool that works yeah. too but I will say, and I don't know if you've encountered this too, Wale, is you plug in like five sensors, you've got them working, 
the next or the sixth sensor, you're like, well, you know, uh, it's kind of, it's just code at this point. So that's why you've got to get to the point where, okay, cool, now I'm proficient in coding sensors. I got to get a customer problem or a use case to solve because otherwise you're right. Your sensors are just going to sit in the shelf because you're sitting there going, well, if I know how to do the first five, I know how to do the next five. So I know, uh, Rudy, we had a whole bunch of questions. So super excited to just like dive in on the IoT use cases. The next challenge, which everyone started to ask anyway, is uh, we are on our next episode going to be diving into industrial IoT. And we're going to dive into use cases, protocols, um, you know, Ethernet IP, Modbus, OPC UA. So for the yep. next challenge, we're going to keep this kind of AMA style going. So think about a question that you want to ask, especially in industrial. Um, you can post it to the chime. You can hashtag IoT all the things uh, on Twitter, and then we will pull those questions. And then our next session is going to be all focused on industrial. So again, whether you want to know about protocols, IT versus OT, we do all of that in the next Twitch. So that is that is a challenge, and hopefully challenge will be accepted. Also, we posted it at, during the trick, but... We do have the IoT well architected lens. So if you want to start digging into best practices, definitely use that piece of content. We'll post that as a resource for uh, this episode. It's a great thing to just figure out if you're doing IoT and on the right track. So Rudy, maybe we maybe we bring this home uh, and see yeah. if we can land land this land this land this fish, land this bird. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. I am Wally on the AWS I'm side Rudy. and and I am Rudy, and this is IoT. IoT, all the, all the things. things. <laughs> Did we get it?